investments in Egypt and expanding bilateral ties. He said there is need for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza and stressed rejection for the forced displacement of Palestinians. Shukri also said there is international agreement over reaching a solution to the Palestinian cause. He said Cairo will continue to coordinate with Paris over cooperation and the issues of mutual concern. For his part, the French top diplomat said the talks discussed the repercussions of the war in Gaza on the Egyptian borders. He thanked Cairo for efforts to allow aid into Gaza. Sijourné is on a tour of the Middle East region, which also includes Jordan, Palestine and Lebanon, and talks with the Israelis. Welcome back, and uh, we're delighted to be joined over the phone by Ambassador Mithat Miligi, former assistant to the foreign minister. Good afternoon, Mr. Ambassador. Good afternoon to you. Uh, well, sir, uh, Foreign Minister uh, Sameh Shukri have just concluded his meeting and press conference with his uh, French uh, counterpart, Stéphane Sejourné, uh, and uh, they both discussed uh, the uh, significance of bilateral ties, of course, and uh, topping the agenda was the uh, Gaza issue. Uh, how do you see the developments in Gaza and the agenda of the talks between the two sides? How coordinated stands uh, impact the situation in Gaza, coordinating uh, stance between Egypt and France and the other partners? Well, first of all, we have to emphasize that this visit is not just for uh, uh, an international issue, which is the current situation in Gaza and uh, the genocide that is taking place in the, the siege uh, area. However, I mean, the both officials have talked about uh, several other topics uh, internationally and also bilateral between the countries. So, uh, as, as, as you heard from uh, the spokesperson of the Ministry of, of Foreign Affairs, um, the, 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 they dealt with several bilateral uh, issues that are pending between the both countries uh, and uh, the importance of continuing coordination and the cooperation in a wide range of uh, topics between the two countries, whether we are talking about uh, uh, strategic relations between the two countries or uh, economic or financial or even cultural relations that were uh, shed some light on. When it comes to Gaza, I think it is a very important step that the French are undertaking to consolidate the Egyptian initiative, actually, uh, that, that took place and that we heard about it and uh, that is aiming to uh, a long-lasting, uh, whether we call it truth or a ceasefire, it's not clear so far. We hope it's a ceasefire or a truth leading to a ceasefire. But most importantly, that the Europeans, uh, and especially the French, are moving when the United States, to a certain extent, lost its credibility in the area due to its position that is unconditionally supporting Israel. As we all remember, even the last voting that took place in the Security Council, the United, the United States refused to uh, implement a ceasefire, uh, stating that this is not in the interest of the area or in the interest of the effort. So uh, it's important that now our European partners start to take their uh, part in, in those things and having more credibility in the area than other, uh, other uh, countries or other um, ways. So uh, I think that the, the, the visit emphasized on this. It was a closed visit, which means that they were discussing the details of the initiative that was originally, as you know, proposed by Egypt and also with the, with the, with the help of Qatar and other players, but it's mainly an Egyptian, uh, Egyptian initiative. And I am sure that uh, we will reach a certain degree of understanding to start to convince the Israelis, which is the most important part in this, since they are the one committing the genocide in Gaza and war crimes, and of course the uh, Palestinian resistance, mainly Hamas. Both of them, if they will agree, then we have a deal that can uh, help the, the, the Palestinian people to uh, overcome the current uh, the bad position they are in right now, humanitarian-wise and 
uh, and other domain. But let's focus on the most important thing that also were mentioned, which is the, the, the important role of the UNRWA. Uh, and that uh, UNRWA is, is, is a very important, I mean, both leaders and both ministers, uh, they, uh, they emphasize on two very important points. The first one is that uh, the two countries agreed on the absolute rejection of any measures or policies that are aimed at forced displacing the Palestinians from their lands, yes. whether internally or externally, which is once again uh, reflect the Egyptian position that we're taking from the first day of this war and was expressed by His Excellency, the President of the Republic, Abdel Fattah Sisi itself. Right. And, and the second point is the importance of the pivotal role and the irreplaceable role of the United Nations, especially uh, the UNRWA, which is known, uh, this is the, the name, I mean, the Relief and Works Agency for Palestinian Refugees, in providing support to the people of Gaza. Um, and, and especially in the light of the circumstance and the catastrophic humanitarian crisis that are, uh, are exposed, uh, that the Palestinians are exposed to it right now, and the importance of the mechanism that they, 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 they have to work on in order to ease the work of this very important humanitarian organization. Let's not forget that due to some accusations to a number that did not exceed uh, a dozen of persons, 12 exactly to be, uh, to be strict, and uh, several countries, several European and, of course, in, in addition to the United States and Canada and Japan, they took a decision to uh, suspend their, uh, their help to this organization, disabling it from working properly and providing the services that they present for over 2 million persons. Let's not forget for just one second that this is a help in a collective punishment that is, 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 is directed to the Palestinian civilians. Mm -hmm. And this should not have happened and we hope that the French position will, uh, will reduce the tension between the organization and those countries who took the decision of suspending their cooperation with it. Right. Uh, Ambassador Miligi, uh, Foreign Minister uh, Sameh Shukri during uh, the meeting and the press conference also stressed that, that there is an international agreement over the need to reach a lasting solution for the uh, Palestinian cause. Now, how do you see the steps uh, taken so far and uh, how to prioritize the coming uh, steps for this aim, to reach this aim? Well, let's say that uh, according to the two ministers that spoke today and were clear today about the two-state solution as the only uh, position and the only basis that could enable the, 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 the ease of the conflict that has been going on for decades. Uh, this, is, this is their point of view and uh, I think uh, is the one of the international community. Uh, and, and I totally agree and support that, provided that it will be exactly as it should be, which means that the Palestinian state will be built and will be uh, established on the borders of the 4th of June 1967. Those are the acceptable terms by us. Uh, right. However, however uh, I think that the most important thing now is to stop the bloodshed that is taking place in Gaza right now and also in the West Bank since Israel have waged its war uh, to the two places and not just that, actually it's trying to extend it even to Lebanon and to Syria and to other areas as well in order to enlarge the, the scope of uh, the current crisis which will eventually uh, lure some more countries that are so far not military intervening to intervene and to help Israel, mainly uh, the NATO countries and the United States. However, the position that were expressed today uh, is, is aiming mainly to uh, control what is going on and to limit it to, uh, to the current situation and not to 
expand it from one side and to reduce it, even it as uh, a ceasefire or, as I said from the beginning, a long-lasting truth that could lead to a ceasefire. Right. Well, I would like to thank you very much, Ambassador Methat El Miligi, former assistant to the foreign minister. Many thanks for your insight, sir. And uh, dear viewers, uh, now we move back to our special reports. The conflict-ridden Sudan is reaching emergency levels of hunger. The statement was made by the World Food Program, which called for immediate access to conflict-hit areas to provide food to millions of displaced people facing acute hunger. More in the following report. The World Food Program is calling for immediate, unimpeded and safe access to conflict-hit areas of Sudan to provide food to millions of displaced people facing acute hunger amid warnings that this forgotten war has potential implications for regional stability. WFP Sudan spokesperson Lenny Kinsley said on Friday, she said the conflict has wide-reaching implications, especially that there has been seen that 1.7 million people are fleeing to neighboring countries like Chad, South Sudan, Egypt, and Ethiopia.